Yeah. Awesome. All right. Got it. All right. Well, if you need anything, um, just you, you have my number, so uh, feel free to text me or call me. All right. Thank you. Have a All nice right. evening. Have a good night. Hi, Maureen. You're muted. Are you enjoying that red licorice? Yes, I am. <laughs> I haven't oh. seen a red twizzle in a long time. Well, I had grandkids and great grandkids for the past week. Oh my gosh. So I got it for them and then we forgot to have it. So I saw. Oh, so now you have to eat it all yourself. I'll, I'll force myself. <laughs> right. They were at your house? Well, it's fun. For the week. Yeah. How many of them are there total? I have five grandkids and two great grandkids. What are that? What's the age span? The span is twenty-two um, to seven for the grandkids, huh? and for the great grandkids, the two and ten months. Oh, okay, all right. Well, they're not all children. You have some. Well, you know that's the. <laughs> that's <laughs> <stable>. <laughs> How have you been? Very busy. Very, very busy. Mm -hmm. You know, when they come up, my, my daughter comes up from Texas with my grandkids. We're just like on the run. Uh -huh. Went into Boston to the Science Museum, duck boats, and oh, yeah, yeah. the zoo down in Providence. And, uh -huh. And I have one brother lives in a pond, one brother lives on the ocean, went to both of their houses. Uh -huh. She invited everybody over here. Surprise. Yeah. Oh, nice. So one of those things is just everybody's all over the place and it was just constant. So she went home yesterday. Oh. Okay. Now I'm picking up the pieces. Yeah. <laughs> Laundry, cleaning, you know, all the usual stuff. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Lauren. You're muted. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so um, we don't have Kevin anymore. We are a committee of four. And Nicole said she may be able to join, but if she does, it will be late. She's in the middle of getting meeting a deadline. So, so I think it's just us. OK. So um, I guess the first thing is, we have a quorum. Um, last time we weren't able to approve the May 19th mi minutes because the three people who approved them at the prior meeting weren't there because Lauren wasn't there. Mm. Now Kevin's gone and Lauren and I are here, but we don't have a third person to approve them. So I think they're just never going to get approved. And, and, and tonight now we don't have, um, a quorum for the June 16th minutes either because until Nicole joins we won't be able to approve those so so we'll just skip those for now I don't know what happens to minutes that never get approved I don't know if I I guess I'll try to just post them and call them a draft and I don't think anybody's ever going to notice <laughs> all right are there any let's see nobody from the public is on busy time of year wow that's surprising oh you know what it's music um music alley night Oh, yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Hmm. I would have been there probably if it wasn't for this. Uh -huh. All right. Well, if that's the way they feel, we'll just go on <laughs> without them. So, um, so, okay. So, the Lakeshore development. Um, Lauren, I don't know if you have any questions about this um, you, because you missed the last meeting. There was a lot going on about that. Um, I was actually hoping that uh, Melissa Raymondetta would be on because that's the the third item. I mean, we, we sent the letter to MEPA. We sent the comments. Yep. Um, I don't know if either one of you had a chance to look at that 133-page document that was attached to the agenda. It's, it's really pretty interesting to skim it at some point just to see, particularly some of the comments like from the Taunton River watershed were really good and um, ours were short. Ours, I just really wanted to focus on the restaurant, but there are a lot of um, a lot of really good comments. I mean, not so 
many from the citizens, I think, in that area, you know, like traffic, stuff like that, aren't, aren't quite as meaningful because people always object to that sort of stuff for every project. But I think the Taunton River watershed ones were really good on a good, a good a address of all of the environmental consequences. So this is a long, I think as Nicole was the one who made the comment last time that MEPA is a long drawn out process. So this is, this is gonna go on for, this whole project will go on for a long, long time. Actually, what was interesting to me is reading the, the narrative at the beginning of the MEPA determination, this project has, they, they filed and withdrawn and filed and withdrawn and filed and withdrawn for years. I had no idea that was, had been going yeah, on. I'd be, yeah. Yeah, it was. I was surprised how many years it had been going on. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, what I have no, you know, what was the rationale for the withdrawal? You know, did the economy turn or something, or were they not able to get it approved the way they wanted? So yeah, so who knows how how this will go? But anyway, we'll. we'll so I did sort of skim it and was looking at the comments, but like the overall gist of it is, they're saying that the Claremont companies has to like do this environmental impact report and address all the areas that they talk about yes yeah no okay. i made the comment last time that i'm not terribly familiar with mepa i did work for mass dep and i i knew of its, its, its existence but i was never really involved in it in any detail and the way i understand it is uh, obvious is there's certain certain thresholds and if any project in any part of the state meets a certain threshold, you know, whether it's the parking spaces or the, the, the square footage or um, whatever, ACDC um, uh, area, that you have to ask, you have to ask if you need to do an environmental review. And that's essentially what they have done is, is and MEPA then in this case said, yes, you do have to do one. Mm -hmm. And then they spelled out in a lot of detail, it seemed to me about what, what the, what the proponent needs to do to reduce their environmental impact. And that mm -hmm. seems to be what their, their goal is, is just to not to deny uh, permits or to um, prohibit projects, but just to make them go through the process of making it better. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought some of the some of the MEPA comments were really really good too because that's so some of the things we noticed like Maureen and I when Maureen when we went on that site visit you know we could see you know there was was there going to be any attempt to save any of the trees they didn't really talk at all about any um, uh, any low uh, they said that it was not going to be a lead building a, 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 which is the highest energy efficiency yeah. you can get you know they weren't making any attempt to do that. They really it didn't seem like they were making any effort at that stage to say, oh, well, this is going to be really green. You know, we're going to do, we're going to make it the greenest uh, construction that we can. And so it seems like that's kind of where, where MEPA comes down. Now, I don't know what MEPA's authority is, you know, whether um, it did look from that narrative like there were times where they didn't approve the final environmental impact report that the project was not approved because they didn't the, the final impact report didn't address MEPA's concerns so um but again I I really don't have enough of an understanding of the process but I think we'll, we'll all have a, a chance to learn about it as this goes on for who knows how long so yeah um all right and then the um the act the action focus team so last time um, Lauren, um, Melissa Raymondetta, who's been on this call, these calls yep. frequently, that they have actually <clears throat> submitted to the Community Preservation Committee now a, uh, a request for determination of eligibility. And that was supposed to be taken up last night, but uh, the CPC didn't meet because they didn't have a quorum. Um, and I know Gina asked, Gina Guastoni, the chair of that committee, asked Melissa to revise the uh, the certificate, the uh, form, the request form, because she was a little clear, the committee, the CPC was unclear about who they were actually, whether they were actually asking that the property be purchased or that, um, mm -hmm. you know, they, that it wasn't clear what the, what the process was going to be, which I was kind of interested to um, talk to uh, just a couple of people on the CPC about that. Maybe I'll have a chance next time because I didn't, have, because they didn't meet last night because it seems to me that a lot of these projects are pretty vague 
when they start out like a Hanson Farms, they have determined that it is an eligible project, but it's not clear where the money is coming from or exactly what the, what is going to be um, requested. You know, the scope seems pretty vague, so I'm not sure whether this project isn't, you know, whether it's been being treated the same or not. It just seems to me that that you could determine that it's eligible and then you would determine later, like, because one of one of Gina's questions was, well, where are the funds coming from? Is it all going to be town funds or, you know, mm -hmm. and that's the kind of thing that you, you, once you get into a project and you have some support for it, then you start looking around for, for funding and. Right. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But I think what I'm going to do is try to talk to Melissa a little bit and, um, and, and I think it's also interesting that the Taunton River watershed comment letter talked about that this, that that's a good idea that the town should buy this and make a park out of it that the land mm -hmm. on the lake side so. So I think they have support now I my understanding is that the Taunton River watershed Council is does not have any money for any kind of um, projects like this you know that they're a, they're an advocacy organization they do. Mon river water monitoring and things like that, but they're, they're, they're not they're not, for instance, like the wildlands trust. And you know whether Wildlands Trust would get involved in anything like this. It's it's all pretty preliminary. So anyway, we'll continue to follow that. And we are, if you recall, the um, what are we? The I forget what our what we named ourselves. Melissa was the applicant, and I think we're the, we're a co-sponsor or a support support organization. However, I don't remember what exactly what the form said. But anyway, we are on there as well. We are on the application form. So I think it would be, you know, I'm, I'm happy to try to get more involved and see how we can help shepherd it through. Because it really is very confusing. I mean, all of these projects, it's like people have ideas, but then how one gets them through the process is so vague because so many of them just seem to end up on, well, it's if it's the, the towns in the town's lap, you know, is the town going to do it? Is the town going to support this? You know, is Michael Dutton going to, do the whatever needs to, to be done to get Hanson Farms set up. Same and if it all lands in his lap, well then or you know, or um Jennifer Wabrion, the assistant, you know, it's just it's really hard to get things done because they can't do it all. You know, every time somebody comes up with one of these ideas, they've got other things that they have to do. And so they can't just drop everything and and go after each new open space or whatever project. So I don't know. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit confusing to me how this is all supposed to work, and I think to everybody. So even those who have been doing it for a while. So yeah. So. One thing that might be helpful or interesting is like you have some relationships with the people in some of like the wildlife like trust organizations no, yeah, yeah. i mean it would be great if they could come to one of our meetings to talk about like what they do and like how they work and like how we you know because i think it's like anytime you sort of get like private organizations involved they have some ability to get things done in a way yeah. that is you know a little more streamlined than right. you know governmental organizations yes yeah yeah you know i don't know you they did come once oh or, okay i don't know if you missed it they came and talked about the wyman meadows property yeah i must have missed that one yeah, you missed that one yeah they um and uh who has not come is, is scott mcfadden who's their land who's the person who's been involved with the hansen farms and then they were also involved long before I, uh, I was on this committee with Murray Needs, mm -hmm, they helped with mm -hmm. that. But yeah, they are very, very knowledgeable. I mean, they know how these deals work. And and actually that was one of my thoughts too, is I think I will just call Scott, as far as I know, they won't be involved in this Lake Nip project at this point. It's for one thing, it's just too early. Nobody knows yeah. what's gonna happen with this. And of course it would, it would require that the Claremont companies be willing to sell that land they own it now so unless they're willing to sell it there's no negotiation about price or where the money's coming from or anything else and we don't yeah. know if that would ever happen but but yeah they understand um, kind of the 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 whole process of, of all the different pieces that have to move together and they are yeah you're, you're absolutely right they're absolutely able to move 
more quickly and independently and, and as a, a small organization. And this is their, this is their area of expertise. You know, yeah. this is all they do is, is land acquisition and land management. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, you know, maybe I, it would be nice, I suppose, maybe to have him, have one of them come. I mean, I know um, the people will come again and talk about wine and meadows because they're going to have a draft of their plan pretty soon. I think mm -hmm. the trails, what the trails would look like. So we definitely will hear from them. That's great. Yeah. So, um, Okay, and speaking of that, um, Wyman Meadows update I have. And so that was, I think the last time I was here, uh, or I, we were, last time we met, I had just come back from a, a site visit at, at Wyman Meadows. And so they are in the process of doing a plan now that that would lay out the the parking area have, have you you've been there haven't you lauren yeah yeah, yeah. So you, with the pictures mm -hmm. so you know, there's that kiosk that's left which they think is in pretty good shape actually but that could mm -hmm. be rehabilitated and there's oh, a, good. Bit of a parking area to the left so they're going to actually do a plan that lays all that out um they're going to they i went and walked with them part of the way there was one volunteer and one um mitch mitch um mitch hennings i think was his name who was uh, who works for them, and he it was it's marked where they thought the trail would go, and then trying to figure out how, like what the cost would be, where you have to put bog boards down and stuff like that. And he, mm -hmm. he gave me kind of an update um, about that recently. They're thinking it's not going to cost that much at all, like in maybe the hundreds of dollars. You know, oh, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah, not that much. And um, and then the, what we will have to do is when they, I mean, he will present a plan to us, and then I think at that point we would. Um, probably go to the conservation commission because they have jurisdiction over it and they mm -hmm. would have to approve any any alteration of the wetlands. And then I'm not, you know, and they, they didn't think there'd be a whole lot to do to, to clear the trail. They get volunteers to do that. And so I think that's, you know, that's going to really move pretty quickly. Um, and I think it'll be nice to have something under our belt that we can say yeah. that we can actually accomplish. And I think it would be nice to do a presentation to the uh, um the town council at some point you know when it's when it's done in a deal and maybe have some kind of a public event also where we yeah that would be great people, yeah and introduce introduce them to the trails and stuff like that so so that's um that's that's kind of exciting i think so and I, oh and i had a meeting with michael dutton on the 12th of july he said he had suggested that i meet um with him a few months back before my husband died and then i had to cancel that and then um we met just to kind of go over things and I, and I mentioned that to him and one of one of the things I want to make sure is that the water department which owns that land adjacent to the conservation land knows what's going on and so he would he said he would um give them a heads up you know I don't want somebody wondering what's going on when we're out there and if somebody, yeah. um, you know messing around with the the wellhead protection area or something so um so that I think that's really all to talk about there um parks information for town website lauren now did you i think when you talked to me the other day you said something and i think i don't remember you said i think you said you hadn't done anything on that well i've i've emailed brooke now oh, okay. and i haven't heard anything back so it's been enough time that i need to like reach back out to her or add someone else to the email or something because i didn't even get like a like hey so, got your email so yeah, that that's that's what I get generally from her also. Is yeah. No response. <laughs> and I also would like to see the um, the minutes of the Parks and Recreation uh, Department. I've looked for those for a long time and there's there aren't any. They're never up there because I was curious at one point when, when the new director was appointed, you know, what they were saying about him and what his scope, the scope of his duties would be, et cetera, but there's never anything posted. So I mentioned that to Michael Dutton. So um i would uh did you have you thought have you talked to josh at all i think that would be the place i would go next yeah I, yeah I'll, I'll contact him next yeah. after our meeting yeah and not because i i know whether that's a, you know an area that he's involved in at all but he was just so helpful um, yeah okay so okay um all right and so let's see nicole still is not here so we can't get a three committee update Hmm, Hanson Farm. So I talked with um, 
the Hansons a couple times, they have finished their survey, which was the big, their, their part. That was what they had to do. But when I last talked with David, they had found a discrepancy in one of the property lines. So I, that's going to have to be resolved in some way. And I don't know, um, it's the, the property that is their sister owns. And there's like a 10 foot discrepancy or something. So I don't know if they, they have to figure out how to go about what, resolving what that. You, Eileen, what did you say they discovered a what? A discrepancy in the property oh, line. Discrepancy, okay. Yeah. Thank Between, you. Be, you know, that whenever, whenever, um, oh, I'm trying to think of her name, the sisters. Um, oh, Carol. Carol, yeah. Whenever yeah. Carol bought that property and, and built the house right there, you know, that, that it must have been yeah. surveyed then. But when the surveyor went out just now, this, this just finished up this month, it did not, it, there was, they didn't have, they weren't finding the same lines. Yeah, yeah. So they were going to have to figure out whether it was just a mistake on somebody's part or what. So hopefully that, that and that was one big step that had to be completed before the town could go forward. And Michael did tell me that he and Jennifer have a conservation restriction drafted, you know, a rough draft of it. So that's one of the next big steps. So, um, so things are, are moving slowly, uh, but they're, they're moving. That's a good thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And this isn't a project where, you know, where we have to worry about somebody coming in and, and buying the farm and putting up a subdivision. I mean, the Hansons are committed to this. So, uh, It'd be nice to get it done quickly, but slowly is okay as long as it gets done. So, um, all right, we're going right through this agenda. We're going to be done by seven thirty. <laughs> <We're still laughs> um, Styles and not a, Michael told me that there's a chance that we're going to get federal money for this. That the state has approved um, submission of a. I'm not sure what the process is, but the state has put the Styles and Hart project forward to the feds for a million dollars or something um, and and for the whole, you know, the trails, the kiosks, uh, the land clearing, parking, whatever. So um, that that sounded like really good news too, but again, it's- When will they know about that? You know, let me see if I, um, if I wrote that down in my, my notes from that meeting with him. The, okay, so the state has recommended that styles that that the um, national park service money, and they will find out in September. So the state has recommended that it be eligible, and I, I don't know if then the state then the, whether the town has to apply again or whether they already have applied, but at any rate, they should find out in September. Yeah. Okay. And and the um, community preservation grant for this that project is going to be 1.3 million dollars and but the grant funds if they get those federal monies would partially offset that or entirely offset that i don't know which and it covers the parking area on broad street trailhead and trail improvements fishing platforms kiosks and signage including historical and environmental um wow. and wetland crossings that's huge. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So that sounds pretty good. Um, they're still looking at the purchase of the two lots for parking. And I think that's where that Chinese restaurant is. That's a, it's $300,000. Um, and I think that that's still, I think that's a separate application that's also pending with the Community Preservation Act. And they decided there would be no lighting of the parking lot. No what? No lighting. Much. Day, daytime use only, I right, guess. Yeah, so oh. daytime use only, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's that. Um, what was that was? Oh, all right. We need a new open space committee member. Do either of you have any thoughts about somebody? you could recommend or talk, talk to yourself and see if you could convince them to. How often do they meet? Open space committee. <laughs> it's us. Oh, for open space, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know you, I was thinking 
about the preservation. I know there was some talk. Yeah, about that's new business. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, open space. I have no idea. Yeah, Lauren, do you have anybody? I don't have anybody, but I'd be happy to sort of put a ad up on the Bridgewater Residents Facebook group with oh, a link with yeah. a link to the town's application that or the great. yeah. That that's perfect. That's wonderful because that's something I am not going to do. All right, I'll do that. Okay. And if you can think of any other places as well, I mean, not, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if there's any other. Um... I mean, I think people use the next door app, but I have never delved into that. So, yeah. okay. Okay. Um, so would you say it's a Bridgewater residence Facebook page? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Um, idea. Okay, that's that's good. There was some there's something else I was gonna say. But yeah, it would be nice if we could get um, somebody other than just all us old retired folks. So all right. Um, so the new business is that we have to appoint an open space committee representative to the community preservation committee. And Maureen, I've already talked to Lauren about this. I was hoping she might be willing to do it, but she feels like she can't take it on. She likes to spend evenings with her son because she's at school all day. Um, so I don't, I, would you be interested? Well, how often do they meet? They meet once a month. The meetings are long, you know, they're not, I mean, we've never had a half, well, I guess we have, this one's gonna be really short, but our meetings are usually an hour, an hour and a half at most. And theirs are two hours, sometimes even three. They start at 6.30 on the fourth, I think it's the third or fourth Thursday of the month. And um, Gina Glasconi is the chair, Carl, Carlton Hunt is co-chair or assistant chair or whatever. Um, Kevin said, and, and Gina agreed with this, it's not really a whole lot of work, like a, not a lot of homework, but the meetings are, are long, you know, and you do have to, what's most important is being there because they do have a lot of stuff to get done, you know, like right now, for instance, you know, like the, um, the Lake Nip mm. proposal couldn't be considered last night because they, you know, they don't have a quorum. So, and they've lost a couple of members recently. Like they have a, the planning board member, I think has um, resigned for some reason. And then of course, Kevin just got off and then they are required to have somebody from a housing authority uh, by statute, but we don't have a housing authority. So they have to count that number for quorum purposes, but there is no person. So they have, they've had trouble getting a quorum sometimes. So that it's just important to be able to go. So, um, I don't know if you think that you could commit to that. It's a nighttime meeting, right? It's, it's uh, the meetings start at 6.30. On a Thursday. Yeah. I'm, I'm just running through what nights if I take care of my grandkids. Yeah. Um, and it's the, it's the fourth, so it was supposed to be last night. So that's the fourth Thursday of the month. Well, I think that would probably be okay. You know, I do travel now and again, so uh, we would run into that, but. Yeah, and I mean, I. Tolerate me. All right, okay, all right. And yeah, I mean, I I would travel too, you know, I mean, if you, I, I know Nicole couldn't do it, so it would either have to be you or me, and I, yeah, and I, I also travel, so if you could do it, that would be great. And you would have, you have to get appointed, you have to be sworn in, you know. You oh, okay. Yeah. And well, I, then can, can you do it? I thought you could only be on one. One committee at a time. No, uh-uh. Representative of the open space. No, it has to be from the. the we oh, have okay. The, yeah, yeah, the open space space committee. It has to have a representative. Well, I mean, they don't have to have a representative, but. Okay, but they should, I got gotcha. you. Because they are one of the designated members of that committee. Okay, if they can put up with me, I'll give it a try. All right, great. That's they wonderful. may they may be crying when they hear about it, but. <laughs> We'll see you know, how it works. If out. For any reason you find, well, unfortunately, what we can't do 
because I go to those meetings sometimes just because like for for instance Hanson Farms has been on their agenda for quite a long time and I knew more about it than Kevin so I would go and partially I was trying to learn a little bit about what their process was as well because it yeah. keeps coming up you know so I I will sometimes be there with you but um, what we can't do is have you there one time as the op open space representative and me there the next time as open space it has to mm -hmm. be the designated person which is unfortunate really i mean i think i think it'd be a lot easier if you could have just anybody from the open space committee present at any given meeting acting for the committee but you can't do it that way so yeah gotcha yeah but anyway you know if you you can try it and um you usually know ahead of time when you're going to be out of town and stuff, which is helpful, you know, if you can tell them that, because I, what's really troublesome is like yesterday where she just doesn't know till the day of, you know, mm -hmm. called me at six o'clock to say, oh, no, we're not going to have the meeting. Uh, so if, if, I think that's the most important thing is just to, you know, if you're going to have your grandkids, just make sure you let them know and um, sure. go in advance. So, all right. Well, thank you, Maureen. So we need a vote on this. Um, uh, I, Lauren, would you like to nominate Maureen? Sure, I, I'll nominate Maureen for the representative for the CPC. I will second that. All those in favor? Yes, we'll have to vote. Can you vote on yourself, Maureen? I don't, I don't know. know if I can vote for myself. I, don't know. I think you better, because otherwise we don't have a quorum. Oh, oh here's Pat Neary. All right, well, thank you, Maureen. Hi, Pat. Maybe we'll find out there's been another meeting that we, where they've all been. Okay, come on. So she's still trying to connect. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to mention, just the last item on the agenda is, I think you all know, um, well, Ma Lauren, maybe you don't. Do you know where the Murray Needs property is across the street from Hanson's on North Street? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So, um, you know, there there's the slaughterhouse there, the, that big red barn. Mm -hmm. And apparently that is not in business anymore and the property is for sale. Um, I think it's about, I think maybe 14 acres or something. I, I'm not sure about that, but um, so there's some discussion. Um, well, the Hansons particularly would be interested. They, they raised the issue that if that property is sold to a developer, it's then, then we're going to have um, a development right, at, up, uh, right adjacent to the Murray Needs property. So that open space is then, you know, going to be bordering on um, some some kind of a development, and then it might be nice to be able to acquire that property, the that Betson property, which goes back quite a ways, I guess. You can see if you've been by there, all the logging that has been going on in, back there, and then it's also um, goes way back and is adjacent to. David Hansen's land, and he has a parcel that he expects at some point he will designate as open space also. So anyway, I just mentioned that I brought, I brought it up at the um, Community Preservation Committee meeting last time, and they said, we just need to talk to the town manager. So that's what I did. I, I mentioned it to Michael Dutton. Um, and it's, a, it's, it's kind of, it's an interesting prospect. And one of the things that um, might be possible is if that there are two houses there now and that the front lots could be kept as houses sell, sold as, as so the lots could be sold which might help finance purchase for as open space for the back part of the lot so to preserve what now is woodland basically i mean some of it's pretty destroyed i guess by the logging that's gone on there but um david hansen said it couldn't be used for farming now it's just it's been pretty trashed but uh so anyway, that's that's just one another project now that's that's kind of out there, and like I was just describing. So all right, so what do we do with it? You know, I talked to Michael Dutton. Um, 
but where do we go from here? And so I'll, I, now that I've talked with him, I'll, I will get back with, with the Hansons, but it's, it's just one of these things. It's like, um, who can, who can take it and run with it? And, and it's hard to know because I don't feel like I, I don't, you know, it seems like somebody would need to know, would need to know to how to approach the landowner, who to talk to, you know, who's got it, who is it, who is it listed with? Um, and anyway, so we'll, it just seems like every time one of these ideas comes up, we just kind of have the same lack of clarity about who can, can move ahead. But I guess maybe that's just our role is we just keep trying to push it. And so at least there's some, at least there's somebody to talk to, you know, at least like there's, we're, we're, there's another voice besides the town, town staff. Mm -hmm. to, to deal with it so um i don't know pat's having trouble connecting i hate to just end the meeting while she's still trying to pat all right well i had a question about our next um in the our next august is um Eight, the 18th would be our normal meeting date. Does that work for either of you or both of you? Yeah, it works for me. I probably won't. It's my husband's birthday. Okay. We'll How about the 25th something. then? What's that? How about the 25th? Because uh, that the 25th of August, because that would be four weeks from today. So that would be. All right. Is that what that As far as I know, I think that would be okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So let's let's do it then. Um, and then the next the next date would be our normal time would be September fifteenth, the third Thursday. I mean, yeah, third Thursday. Are we going to continue with um, the styling? Uh, um, my understanding is that it had that's required through July, but I don't know what's going to happen next month. Okay. So maybe we can go to live meetings next month. I don't know. Um, I know the planning board is still Zoom. Um, I just saw a notice from them today, and I assume that was must be for an August meeting. I think that I think I saw something that had been extended through August. I'm not sure though. So, <laughs> hey Pat. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I couldn't I get in. in. I know. I kept saying your audio wouldn't connect. I can't hear you. What? It said your audio wouldn't connect. Oh, I just been waiting. <laughs> no, you know, you didn't show up. No, I, I mean, I knew you were trying to get in for a long time. And it said uh, Pat Neary's audio is trying to connect. Huh. But yeah, okay. you weren't you weren't in the waiting room or anything. Okay, I thought maybe your meeting didn't happen or something. So, no, it <laughs> happened. It, the good news is it happened. The bad news is it's over. <laughs> <laughs> so, was we have no other members of the public here? Were you at a, a, another meeting somewhere tonight? No, I've been sitting here. <laughs> So All I right, thought so it, it didn't have a quorum, so I was just going to leave it leave it on until something happened. <laughs> oh, oh no, yeah, no, we had a quorum. Okay, good. Uh, um, so yeah, so we will. I mean, we started at seven, you know. Yes. Right. You know, you know, okay. All right. All right. Well, anyway, we we only had the three of us, um, and. Um, I'll ask you also um, if you have any ideas about a new open space committee member. We need one. So just keep that in mind. And let me know if you have any thoughts. Yeah, I, I will see if I have any person in mind. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Did you did you discuss your uh, tree committee tonight? Nicole? said she might be able to join um, late, but she isn't here and we're done. If you have anything to report, we, did you go to the tree committee meeting? Yes, I did. Yeah. When, it was this week, right? It's uh, 
It's ongoing. They're just trying to put regulations in place or suggestions because they want to finalize their, you know, um, suggestions by the end of August. And they're, you know, just talking about uh, details for the committee, such as uh, taking an inventory of town trees and then what to do with valuing them. And it's quite, quite a involved process that they want to have, but they do plan to have everything in place by the end of August so that they can give it to the town manager and he can move forward with it. Pat, what are they doing about membership? Have they decided on who the members will be yet? They have listed a lot of uh, types of people that they would like on the committee. For example, uh, you know, uh, one person from the town, uh, they were hoping to add an arborist to that list, but they think that's too hard to come up with. Mm -hmm. So they're just saying someone like an arborist with an equal amount of uh, experience. Uh, they're also saying, let's see, what other, uh, I have a list here. Let me take a quick look at it because I, there are quite hey, a few. Was there Matt, any suggestion that there be someone from open space? Because I know Nicole had mentioned yeah, that. They, they want someone from open space. Okay. And uh, Nicole was unable to make that meeting. Oh, so okay. I don't know, uh, you know, if she's going to be able to do any of that. Yeah, okay. But I personally, I'd love to see her on it, but, yeah. you know, I know how busy she is. Right, right. They want to have uh, maybe the tree warden, uh, one or two people from the BIA, someone from the planning board, uh, possibly a landscape architect, and as I said, uh, someone from open space, mm -hmm. and general public. Okay. So, uh, the chair, Ray, would like the committee to not be too large because he feels it gets to be, you know, unwieldy. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's but pretty I, committee. I know a lot of people can't make these meetings, so probably wouldn't be too large. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's a toss up between if you have it big, well, then you have more input. But then if you don't, if you can't get a quorum, then you, it doesn't work out either. So. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, for example, I know Nicole couldn't make it and Bill Maltby couldn't make it yesterday. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, I think a lot of it is summertime. You know, um, yeah. people have things to do and they have families and right. they just are kind of on vacation. Are you going to be on it from the general public? Uh, it was mentioned, but I, you know, haven't been officially invited. Oh, okay. And I, I'm, I'm a little concerned only because my hopes for that tree committee were to try to develop some controls over developments and they're only talking about town trees yeah. you know trees on a sidewalk or right. tree trees in the town public uh, areas yeah i'm hoping that some regulations can be done to stop clear cutting yeah. right yeah and i just don't know you know if that's going to happen yeah. So, I mean, if I w was on that tree committee, maybe I could be helpful in that regard, but maybe not. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you wonder if that maybe could be a phase two, <laughs> but it could right. be a lo long time in coming. But I mean, that was certainly Nicole's interest too, but I know right. from what, what you said, it, it, it has not taken that direction. So I know she's, she's uh, hoping for that, but you know, where she hasn't been at these meetings, it's hard to say. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, maybe I should not be on it and 
just try to find regulations to get an ordinance introduced to town. Oh, yeah, okay. I really don't know, Eileen. Yeah, 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 okay. All right, well, maybe we can chat about it sometime. All right, well, thank you, Pat. That was a good, uh, we didn't have any, any report on that, so I'm glad you joined and could bring us up to date. Pat, do you have any questions about anything else on the agenda that you missed? Uh, I think I, I read all the agenda and I'm pretty familiar with, you know, the CPC and- Yeah, and you know well, they didn't meet last night. They it was it was canceled at the yeah. last minute. Lack of, right? lack of quorum, yeah. So. Yeah. So like I said, it's summertime. That's what happens, I guess. Yeah. All right. Well, summer or not, we'll try to meet on August 16th. Is that what I said? Or August 18th? August no, 25th. 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 I'm sorry. Not to confuse everybody. August 25th. Okay. And uh, hopefully we'll have a quorum. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. And um, Pat, you weren't here to hear this, but Maureen has agreed to be the Open Space Committee representative to the Community Preservation Committee. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. All right. So well, now you, you have to have a person uh, for the tree committee. <laughs> right, yeah, I know it. <laughs> we don't have enough persons. <laughs> I know, right. And plus we need our own new person as well, so. Yeah. All right. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your summer. Thank you. It is adjourned. It is 7.45. All right. Good night. All right. Good night. Bye. Good night.